Today I'll be showing you how to set up a Minecraft server for Bedrock Edition. This process is to be used if you want to set up a Minecraft server for mobile devices and consoles, and the Windows Edition of Minecraft that you get from the Microsoft Store, not to be confused with the Java Edition, which you download directly from Minecraft.net. I'll be demonstrating this using Ubuntu Server. So you are going to need a couple things. First of all, you're going to need a spare computer to install Ubuntu Server on, which you'll be running the server off of. And you will also need a router, and you'll want to connect your server to your router via an Ethernet cable. Connecting to Wi-Fi on Ubuntu Server is pretty complicated, and I would strongly recommend against it. It's much slower and much less reliable. If you really want to connect over Wi-Fi, I have instructions in a separate video, which I'll link up in the card and down in the description. But that said, let's get into it. So the first thing you have to do is get Ubuntu Server by going to ubuntu.com slash download slash server, and then download the latest LTS release, which at the time of shooting this video is 24.04.2 LTS. I'd recommend staying away from using short-term intermediary releases and only use LTS versions because those are supported for much longer, they're more stable, and they have much better community support because so many more people are using those and they're around for much longer. So once you download that, you're going to flash it to a flash drive, which I've already made a video on how to do that. Just check the description. And then once you've done that, just boot from your Ubuntu server installation media on the PC that you want to use as the server. Then hit try or install Ubuntu server. And then once you get to the language selection screen, select your language. I'm going to be using English in this video. Then select your keyboard layout, and then select search for third-party drivers by navigating up to it with the arrow keys, then hitting space to select it, then come back down and hit done. And by default, your server will get a automatically assigned dynamic IP address from your router. For a server, I would recommend that you use a static IP address. I'll show you how to set that up real quick. Just come up here, hit enter, then select edit IPv4, then change IPv4 method to manual, and then you get your IP configuration fields. The first field, the subnet field, is the most complicated, but for most people you would put 192.168.0 1.0 slash 24. That's the way it wants you to specify your subnet mask. It wants what's called a sitter address. Let me explain what that is real quick. So the slash 24 represents the subnet mask 255.255.255.0. And in that subnet mask, which is what most people have, the first three portions or octets of your IP address identify your network. So you put in those three. So in my case, I'd put 192.168.1. And then the fourth octet represents a device. So here you just put zero for that. And then you specify that in the address field. Now for the address field, like in my example, I'll put in 192.168.1. And then for the fourth octet, just pick a number between 2 and 254. Or, and check your router settings to make sure that that IP address is not assigned already. In my example, I'll just use 39. And then once you're done with this, I would then go into your router settings and reserve that IP address for your server 
to exclude it from being handed out by DHCP. And by the way, you can check your network configuration on a device already connected to your network. If your network is set up differently than this example, I'll have a link to an IP subnet calculator in the description. But this is how most people would set this up. Now for the gateway address, this is where things get much simpler because you can just get this from any device connected to your network. In my case, it's 192.168.1.1. And then for name servers, just pick any public DNS server. I'm going to be using Cloudflare's DNS servers in this example, which are 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1. And then be sure to separate the two addresses with a comma. And leave the search domains field blank, then hit save. And then once it's done applying, just come back down and hit done. And then if you have a proxy address, you can put that in here. If not, just leave this blank. And then for mirror address, just leave this default. Now when it comes to storage configuration, I would use an entire disk, which make sure there's nothing on this PC that you need because it will be erased. And then I would deselect, set up this disk as an LVM group, again by navigating to it and hitting the spacebar. This is just something Ubuntu server does by default. I think it's unnecessary for our purposes. Then hit done. And then it'll show you what it's gonna do to our disk. Then hit done. And then it'll warn us of the formatting of our disk, which make sure that there's nothing on this that you need because it will be erased. Then hit continue. And then it'll ask you to set up an account on your server. So for your name, just put in your name. And then pick a name for your server. I'm going to do bedrock-server. Now this has to be all one word, all lowercase. And then for a username, that has to be all one word, all lowercase. I usually just do Drew. And this is the name that you'll use to log into the server. And then just pick a password and retype it. Then hit done. And I would skip Ubuntu Pro and install OpenSSH server, which will allow us to manage our server from another computer. Then hit done. And if this finds any third party drivers, I would strongly recommend installing those. In my case, there are none, so I'll just hit continue. And then this screen just gives the option to install some popular snaps on Ubuntu server. We don't need any of these, so just hit tab to done, then hit enter, and then it'll install Ubuntu server. All right, and then once it's done, just hit reboot now to restart the server. Then once it gets to this screen where it asks you to remove the installation medium, then press enter, basically do what it says. And then once your server restarts, just log in with the username and password that you created on installation. And then the first thing we always do is do a sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade to check for updates, punch in your password. Oh, it looks like we got some updates to install. So just hit enter to confirm those. All right, and then once that's done, the next optional step I would do before we get into our actual Minecraft bedrock server installation is it set up a firewall on this server just for some added security. To do that, just do sudo ufw enable which will enable the pre-installed firewall on ubuntu server and this basically just does a deny all incoming allow all outgoing policy 
So then we need to open up a few ports for our server. First of all, we're going to sudo ufw allow 22 slash tcp for our ssh server and then sudo ufw allow 19132 comma 19133 slash udp for our minecraft server and now we're done what we have to do on the server itself. Now you can do the Minecraft server installation from this screen, but I would recommend working with another computer. To do that, first we're going to log out of our server, then go to another computer on your network, and then open up a terminal window, then type ssh, your username on your server, not on your computer, at your server's IP address, which for me is 192.168.1.39. If you ever forget your server's IP address, or it changes on you because you decided to use a dynamically assigned IP address, you can get this by just logging into your server, and then it'll show its IP address. Now, once you've typed that out, just hit Enter. And then it should ask you if you're sure you want to continue to connecting because it doesn't recognize your server. Just type yes, then hit enter. And then this is the only time you'll have to do that. Now punch in your password on your server. If you get a no route to host error when trying to connect, nine times out of 10, it's because you got the wrong IP address. If you know you're putting in the correct password, but you're still not able to log in, just make sure that you've typed your username here, like username at IP address. If you get an error connection refused, it's probably because you enabled the firewall on your server, but didn't open up port 22. So make sure you open up those ports that I told you to open up with the commands I already showed. But anyway, once you're in, now you're going to go to your web browser, then go to Minecraft dot net slash download slash server slash bedrock and then it'll bring you to the minecraft bedrock server download page and then you're going to scroll down and get the dedicated server for ubuntu linux make sure you don't get the one for windows because that's useless in our case just agree to the eula and then the download button should turn green right click on it then click copy link and then come back to that ssh window and then paste in this command which i'll have in the description followed by the download link for minecraft bedrock server then hit enter and then it'll download minecraft bedrock server and then that will get you a zip file now, to extract that, we need to install a utility called unzip, which we can install with sudo apt install unzip. And then once you've got that downloaded, just type unzip bedrock, then tab to autocomplete the file name, then hit enter, then it'll go extract that zip file. Then we can do an ls to look at our directory and then once we've unzipped that zip file we can remove it with rm bedrock dash server then tab to autocomplete the file name and then if we do an ls again it's gone so now to start the server all we do is dot slash bedrock underscore server and then hit enter and then it'll start up our server and now from your Minecraft Bedrock edition, I'm using the tablet version in this demonstration. Just go to play, servers, and then it'll give you a list of featured servers. We're not concerned with any of those. Just add a server. And then for server name, this can be anything you want. I'll just call it Ubuntu server. 
and then server address is the IP address of your server. So in my case, 192.168.1.39. And then port, just leave that default, 19132. And then hit add and play. And then if you connected successfully, then you're done. If you didn't connect successfully, make sure that you've punched in your server's IP address correctly. And double check the port number. If you still can't connect, a connection failure could also be caused by if you enabled your server's firewall but didn't open up the ports for Minecraft Bedrock server, then go back to your server and do that with the commands I showed you earlier in this video. But from now on, your server will be on your server list, and then you just go to servers, select your server, and then hit play. Now, to get a list of commands that you can use on your server, just type help, and then it'll show the first of three help pages. To go to another page, just type help two or three. Now, I'm not going to go over all these commands because that's kind of beyond the scope of this video, but when you want to stop your server, just type stop. And then, then it'll stop your server. If you wanted to shut down your server, just type sudo shut down now, then hit enter. And if you wanted to restart the server, just do sudo shut down now space dash r. Now, a couple things to note. First of all, by default, this server is only accessible from within your home network. If you want it to be accessible from outside your network on the internet, then you'll need to set up a port forwarding rule on your router, which I went over how to do that in this video, which I'll have linked up in the card and down in the description. You want to forward port 19132 to your server. And second, this video was made assuming that you're gonna be installing Ubuntu server and running the Minecraft server off a dedicated physical PC. If you're doing this in a virtual machine, then there's an extra step that you gotta do, which is go into your virtual machine settings and then change the network type to bridge. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.